Okay. So I just wanted to, um, before we start off, pick up a few notes from Gareth, George and Mike have just spoken. So um, Mike's just actually made my job a bit easier because um, what Zeta Interactive do is we have a cross-channel campaign management and loyalty and real-time interaction platform. So he's covered sort of the, um, the starting blocks for me, which, which makes my life easier, so thank you. Um, and what came out as a common thread across all of them is actually this whole concept of what I'd call user intent or customer prospect intent. So what they're trying to do in that real-time moment. So it was called um, customer experience, um, the real-time AdWords, obviously the advertising part of it. Um, there was also this um, concept that on a mobile device that you need to make the content appropriate to the device on and their intent changes depending on what they're looking at, whether it be a watch or whether it's a tablet or whether it's a phone. So um, that keys nicely into what I'm doing. Now I'm going from a slightly different angle in the fact that I'm looking at you sitting as a, as a marketeer or involved in technology and so forth for practical steps to, to get to a, a real-time situation where you're expanding what you do in real-time um, and, and building that up to benefit your customers and also obviously benefit the bottom line. I guess the way we look at the view of the world is that we've got, like Trafalgar Square, lunchtime in London, you know, there's, there's loads of people visiting the website, or wherever it happens to be. Um, they're all there for different reasons, looking in different directions. We've got this massive thing, Nelson's Column, which is our purchase e-commerce location where we want them all to go towards. But if you have a look in that picture, how many people are actually looking at it? So it's that idea that each individual is maybe in the same place, but they're doing completely different things and how to deal with that. So in terms of different types of real-time, I'm not going to dwell too much on different types, but there's a lot of talk about real-time in the different areas. So there's what I've called, I think there's uh, open areas in terms of how to label these, calendar real-time. So that's a set event in the future where you've got something which is shared, like the Olympics and so on, which everyone knows about and is a heavily competitive environment. So there's, there's classic examples where you have war rooms and everyone getting together trying to maximise the benefit out of that. So that's something that requires pre-planning and people to be there on the spot. You've got private ones, which, you know, 25 years company and so on, and you've got ones perhaps you created, like Donut Day or, um, you know, the fact that there should be a, a, a travel appreciation day, get that experience day and things like that. So you can invent them as well. There's reactive ones like Eurostar, which goes through quite a lot, where they've had to do a lot of planning too. Obviously, that's not a competitive situation. That's more like damage control, really, unless um, you're reacting to something a competitor's done, and then perhaps you're in a similar sort of firefighting situation. And then the one I want to focus on today is the trigger events one. So this is where you're really getting into individual interactions and what that means to the individual. And we've talked about it in the previous um, ones about customer experience and so forth. So we won't dwell on it too much, except to say, obviously, there's different types which span everything that the speakers so far have talked about. So there's advertising ones, there's basket abandonment on your website, there's social posts where someone's inbound and said, oh, look, this experience sucked, and so on. Geo for fencing, and, and there's a whole plethora. So I can't go through all of them. But in terms of those, how do you manage that in this whole complex process? You've got them interacting in all these ways. Where do you start? So um, I'm looking at the practicalities of that. So in terms of Gartner, um, the way that they're looking at it, and, and I agree with this, um, is that if you want to have, at the moment, we've got very disparate real-time interactions. So you may have a basket abandonment strategy. You may have advertising and so on. But there's nowhere where this is all linked together. So they've come up with, only as recently as June 2014, the concept of a customer engagement hub. So what this is, is a real-time location where actually you're looking at not only the single customer view data that um, Mike mentioned, but also beyond that, um, the, the real-time interactions and how those join together into giving the ideal experience at a given moment. So in other words, we're, we're at the moment we're in the stage where we've got there our separate strategies and we're starting to build those up, but it's rare, so they're saying it's less than 5% at the moment in 2015 and companies are actually delivering this combined experience. So where you're looking at the relationship you've got with the client, their persona, and key, their intent at that given moment. And that's one of the key things I'm going to go on about, because getting the intent right and reacting to that intent is one of the key things. It was mentioned um, in terms of the AdWords that, for instance, early on, um, they may be just researching. So their intent has got nothing to do with purchase. So if you do a heavy real-time push for purchase at that moment, 
actually that disruptive effect, which isn't what they want, could actually drive them away from you. So understanding intent is a key part of this. Now, in terms of real time, I've seen it done in um, different levels of success. Low-hanging fruit and stuff that I see a lot of websites is disruptive, simple real time. Uh, real time. So what you get is you get them detecting an action. So, for instance, dwell time of 30 seconds on a shopping basket, and then basically they'll abandon after that. So a pop-up will come, 15% offer or whatever it happens to be. And that's regardless. This could be a high-value booker who comes on your website time and time again, checking out different hotel room rates and so on, for instance, and they've got a genuine reason for pause. All of a sudden you're going, yeah, I'll give you 15%, and I'm going to completely wipe the fact that you're a frequent customer. That changes the tone of their insight um, and the way they perceive you as someone who's willing to be a discount-led interaction rather than actually a value brand who you've got an existing relationship with. So in one fell swoop, you're trying to change that relationship. So to change that, what you need to do is the layers in between. You need to interpret what their intent is. So you need to look at the fact that, okay, on that dwell time, did they click on the drop-down for hotel rooms and was that the last thing they did and is that their pause for thought? And they've clicked on it a couple of times. You then need to decide, once you interpreted the intent, what to do about it. Now, this is a key factor. So it can be quite complex. You can start off simple, have A, B tests and so forth, um, but actually deciding what you're going to do. And it may be best to do nothing. It may be best just to let them go through their process. And then the final thing is act upon it. So intelligent real-time involves that middle layer where you're actually saying to the people, we're going to look at what you're doing, the background we have on you, and actually drive that forward. So you can do this approach on individual case-by-case basis. So you're looking at your current basket abandonment strategy, for instance, build that out, and so on. And then look at it more holistically as you develop that. So what you're going to get out of this, some of it is obviously I've talked a lot about what a customer will get out of it. Um, In terms of the business benefit, we've seen big increases in the money, of course. So if you're doing intelligent interactions that drive more the outcome, you can go from, say, for instance, um, 50 times ROI to more like 500 times. Okay, It changes on case-by-case basis and your client base and how much you're in the commodity market versus that experience, but but you you get huge uplift from actually driving it intelligently. The extra engagement has long-term benefits that sometimes come out a lot later. One of the key bits which can drive your whole marketing strategy is obviously the extra knowledge. So the key factor in this is this initial detect motion. So what you're doing is you're putting out feelers, you're actually collecting what people are up to in real time, and you may decide for a while, the initial three months or whatever, that all you're going to do is just listen to what people are up to in effect. So what will happen is you've then got this backdrop of knowledge and then you can decide to intelligently apply it. So you can decide to collect in a given area so you don't get overwhelmed with data, or you can decide to collect in one specific bit. Now, a given example, so um, cranking it up a bit from the basket abandonment, is um, a loyalty program, and this was the entertainment industry, but obviously it could be um, anywhere else, is about boosting a loyalty program where you've got a case where people aren't that bothered by the standard registration process. They want to be able to interact at the venue There's no such thing as a standard place where where they will go to or how they want to interact. So you've got to tie together those different elements that you can see up there to make sure that actually it's easy for them. And there's been a lot of talk about making things easy for them. So having that concept where there's somewhere centrally that looks at the real time, picks up what's going on, and then chooses the appropriate channel to interact with them is something that... So you've got to have that bit in the middle so that you can be agile. And it doesn't involve a huge IT thing. It's literally something that things plug into and communicate with. So rather than sort of a service sitting there. Now, in terms of the, um, the benefits for this, there's, there's obviously the fact that you, it's easier for them. So when it's easier for them, you get a lot more sign-ups, you get a lot higher loyalty engagement. Um, so, for instance, some examples are 83% increase in registrations. And that that was witnessed overnight, just from making one change, adding one of those channels in one area. So then you then get a combined effect, which is harder to measure. Um, You know what's going on too. So mapped customer journeys directly feed back into the loyalty program, and you find out what's going on in terms of what to improve, what to change. This could be in any context. So for instance, if we're talking about hotels and very different hotel types, 
you could actually pick up the fact that before they go through to the booking process, they've looked at these type of hotel profiles. You're already building up, in effect, a demographic of what they like, and you're using that directly to serve up other content. So there's, there's obviously um, limitless ways this can be used. Um, what I'll do now, because I just noticed the time, um, one minute to go, is just switch to potential pitfalls. Okay. So the one I'll start with is the wrong intervention. This is the, the easiest and the hardest, depending upon the situation, to make sure that you've actually interpreted what their intent is correctly. Okay. That's a key bit. Um, is it needed? So sometimes you want to do something because it sounds great to do, but actually if people are going through that process smoothly, do you need to intervene? Is there a real-time change required? Um, then there's whether it's feasible. By this I mean it's, 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 it's always feasible to, to probably detect usually and gather that information. Well, a lot of the time now because we're becoming more digital. Um, but sometimes getting that delivery back of the information, depending upon how they've interacted with you and the knowledge you've got on them, isn't. So it's just looking at the low-hanging fruit, what's easy to do, and, and sticking to that rather than getting too sort of, I want to do this because it sounds great. And then there's the trying too hard, which is the, like the basket abandonment, where you're always trying to make sure that you get them to do something, this disruptive approach. Um, so, for instance, to go back to Trafalgar Square, you have the red arrows fly over. You'll get everyone's attention pretty much, except the odd person muttering on their mobile because they can't hear the person talking to them. But actually, that's not listening to what they're trying to do, what their intent is. So, yeah. So just very briefly... Um, the where to start, so this is the, um, <laughs> the, the back of the envelope guide because we've only got 10 minutes. There's a, there's a framework we're um, going to distribute um, afterwards for people who want more detailed um, six-step approach. But basically, they will tell you the areas that are critical, and, and your business probably will too, so if you've got retention and so on. Um, looking then, and, and, and might refer to some of this, looking at their landscape in terms of what data you've got available, um, medium and long term opportunity matrix, what's easy to do, what's hard, and then start filling the hole. So practically going in and choosing the areas you're going to work on and, and go step by step. So that's pretty much the end. So um, if, you've, if you want to get a hold of me later, then the contact details are up there.